What is happening, my tribe? It's time for the Bleed Train to return to Shadow of the Earth Tree, so I bring you a dexterity bleed build with a new weapon type that has a fast and powerful new movement with a crazy eyes of war that shreds enemies, a drip that depicts fire and blood and looks great. It's an insane build that you can set up early DLC and you don't want to miss. So let's jump how this build works and everything you need. Game on! The way this build works is taking advantage of the consecutive hits and the bleed or hemorrhage proc when building up bleed to do that massive burst of damage. You need to manage well your stamina because you can drain it pretty fast and have none when you need to roll away. Let's start with the new weapon, the Cursed Blade Surf. When you start playing the DLC right off the first side of grace, you will encounter this type of new enemy if you go northwest for a few seconds. The weapon will drop from these enemies, so you're going to need to farm a little bit. You don't need to farm for a second one to do a will because it's a double weapon like the claws from the base game. The Cursed Blade Cirque is a new weapon type called Backhand Blade, with a new set of attack moves that excels for its fast combos, scales mainly with dexterity at B, and then D with strength and has the fault blood loss buildup. Although you can infuse it with another as of war. Look. In my opinion, it can't be done. That's alright, because the default one called Deadly Dance is pretty crazy. Doing a fast jumping spinning attack, doing a lot of hits with the option of using it a second time, doing a follow up axe kick. The only con is that it gets interrupted when doing the Deadly Dance initial animation, even with a high poise, so you need to time the animation right. Avoid to use it when you're really close to the enemy or the enemy is about to attack. The attack movesets that I really like uh, that does uh, fast multiple hits are the normal attack that it's pretty fast and can become a really long combo. The running attack that doesn't stop when swinging so you can do like a hit and run. And the running strong attack. It's similar to the running attack of any bleed build with curved swords that does two swings with the two weapons. The only con with the attacks is that they can barely stagger the enemies, unlike the old Curved Sword bleed build, giving you additional window to continue attacking without getting hit. The rest of the armaments of this build are a dagger imbued with Golden Vow and any seal to do flame gravity strength, uh, or any low faith incantation you prefer, and also the sacrificial axe, which makes you receive a small portion of FP back every time you kill an enemy helping with the amount of FP it gets spent with the Deadly Dance as of War. In order to make it work, you must have this weapon as an offhand while dual handling the Cursed Blade Cirque. If you like this build so far, please hit that like button and subscribe. That will help the channel a lot to grow and will drive me to make more builds for you guys. So thank you a ton. The armor of this bleed build is the almost complete Fire Knight set, comprised of Helm, armor, gauntlets, and greaves. Like all of the new DLC armors are full with details and pretty aesthetic, with additional power like the enhancement of Mesmer Flame incantations, which we don't use with this build. I'm only using it because of the looks. To get this armor set, uh, you gotta do a little bit of farming at the Feeding Fire Knight all around Shadowkeep in Skadu Altus. The best spot in my opinion was the Storehouse 7th Floor Side of Grace that you will encounter three Fire Knight close by. Be sure you use the Silver Tear Mask and the Silver Scarab Talisman to increase your chances of discovery. The helm was the only piece that I changed for the old and ugly White Mask to increase the attack power by 10% for 20 seconds when bloodlust happens. A con with this armor set is that the entire setup, you won't get to the 51 poise, but to me, Fashion Souls goes first, right? but you can change all the armor or pieces if you want, uh, if you want to achieve the 51 poise and still have mid load. The talismans I'm using are Lot of Blood Exaltation that increases attack power by 20% uh, for 20 seconds when blood loss occurs in the vicinity. And next is the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia that increases attack power relative to the number of attacks you land. Next is the Two-Headed Turtle Talisman. This is a new DLC talisman that increases even more the stamina region that the base game Turtle Talisman provides. You can find it inside a cave behind a waterfall west of Rivermouth Cave in Elak River. But if you don't know how to get there, just follow this path from Castlefront Side of Grace 
to get to Elag River. If you can manage your stamina without it, you can swap it for Millicent Prosthetes. And the last salesman is Dragon Crest Great Shield uh, to reduce physical damage by 20%. For the Physique class, I'm running with the Thorny Crack tier that increases damage depending on the hits you land by 9%, 13%, and 20%, and stacks with the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and lasts 3 minutes. And the second tier is the Green Burst Crystal tier that will increase stamina recovery speed by 15 per second for 3 minutes. For incantations, it's simple. I'm running with the Flame Grammy Strength to increase physical damage by 20% and last 30 seconds, and my always faithful Flame Cleanse Me to remove poison buildup. For this bleed build, Dexterity is the main stat. The class that I used was a Wretch but you can use a Samurai or a Warrior with a good amount of Dexterity and Strength, enough to meet the Curse Blade Circ requirements. This level 150 character has the attributes as follows. Vigor at 55, because the DLC enemies are tough and you need a good base health. Mine at 24, this will result in a great amount of FP points to use the Deadly Dance Ash of War several times. Endurance at 35, to get a good stamina pool and enough equip load to get to mid load. A strength at 10. At 150 level, I didn't add any strength points, but if you plan to go beyond 150, add the new points here. Dexterity at 70. This is the main stat because of the weapon skills be with it. No points in intelligence. Faith at 15 to be able to cast flame grand strength and no points in arcane. So that's how you can set up this insane bleed build using the new weapon Curse Blade Sir early in the DLC. This new weapon type has its pros like great damage, fast attacks, and awesome Ash of War. But I wish it had a little bit more bleed buildup to proc it faster and that the Ash of War didn't get interrupted as much when starting the animation. If you run this build with other modifications or a new item to improve it, please share it down below in the comments. I would love to check them out. And if you like this video, please hit that like button so you can help the channel out and subscribe if you want to see more of my Elden Ring builds in the DLC. So keep enjoying Shadow of the Earth Tree, take care, be safe, and see you on the next one. Ciao!